island boy. I'm just island boy. I'm a get you what going. You go like cheat. I'm a just island boy. <laughs> I limbo. He's a cute white boy. I'm in Florida in the tropical sun. Happy Halloween, y'all. Hope y'all are pulling out your inner island boys tonight. Getting down. <laughs> oh, we just got some trick or treaters at the door. Let them see these. I'll open it wide. Let's look at this wide, <laughs> boys. Happy island boy day. <laughs> Happy island boy day. <laughs> What is up, everybody? Happy Halloween, October 31st, 2021. Wow. We got some trick-or-treater guests right at our door. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. I'm just glad it wasn't Adam Sandler and Big Daddy. Give the kids some candy. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I feel like I can't hear can y'all hear us? Everybody doing okay? I put this on. This is my jam tonight right here. Now I'm not an island boy no more. Now you're Wayne. What's everybody doing for Halloween? Slash Corilla DeVille. Staying sober is number one. Yeah, it is like a Corilla DeVille. I'll, I'll see your jokes. Later. Jokes? You want to do jokes all Halloween? We jokes, got a scary yeah. mask over Fleece's head, one behind my head. Uh, loud and clear, Jamie says. Thank goodness, because all the time we screw this up. Uh, if you guys haven't had a chance to check out the little video we just made for you, Sara, we went and did some service work, and this service work was just showing up and putting smiles on our faces. And I love a new little phrase we come up with with Morgan Green. Me and her kind of coined this phrase. Through service work. What did we say? It's your coined phrase. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> now I forgot it. Oh, Morgan, help us Time out. in service is time sober time spent serving is time spent sober if you go out with the right motive right intention get out into your community go rake some leaves go be a part of an event of some sort and just help out wipe tables clean up it doesn't matter what you're doing because you're spending time being unselfish which is completely opposite of what we used to do in complete selfishness and that time spent in service is going to be that time spent sober we got to start filling our time with things that we used to Because we used to only drink and use, right? And so that time, we're going to replace it with good stuff. Nature abhors a vacuum. So you take away the alcohol and drugs. You're left with a four or five hour window in the evening if you were a a user that could handle it, right? A drinker after work or whatever. And so you fill that time with a positive time, positive learning, education, being a part of people's lives and connecting because connection is the opposite of addiction. Tracy Shoop dropping the big fourzy nizzle. You know Thank you. Thanks, Tracy. Just for that, she's going to get this picture. Oh, Linky says he has drawn oh, you a picture. You a picture. That's, That's for so Tracy. Nice. Thank you, Tracy. Appreciate burn it. The leaves. So, yeah, that's what we did. We went to a ha- Halloween party and it was cool. And, you know, I was thinking, I was like, man, this is kind of a long party. I'm going to be honest here about some of my emotions. I don't like to drag out things in my life if I can go do other things. And I always have other things I had to do. I had a mountain bike tour apart, Fleece's mountain bike. And I wanted to come home and work on that. But I was just thinking, you know what? By me being here, this is somebody's only out. You know, there was people that came from programs where they're inpatient programs. And this was their time to get out and be a part of the community and be a part of people's lives. And so by just us being there to have somebody to talk to or smile with or laugh at or laugh with, we were helping that person stay sober just by the mere presence. And so I kept that at the front of my mind and that kept us having a good attitude all night. We stayed through the whole thing. And Tracy, you are amazing. You did a great job. Yeah, I did a great job, Tracy. It was an awesome turnout and I was so blessed and proud to be a part of it, man. It so awesome. Jeanette's digging your hair, bro. Thanks, yeah. Yeah, bro. Wayne's World. Game party off. time. This is like, this is like party, Wayne. Sober singer, thank you very Link much. Strong with straight. Link strong and with straight fire. Straight fire. So tonight we're going to look at five ways to stay high on life. Then we're going to hit one Discord question. Just thank one. You, just Jim one Hartley. for tonight. Yeah. Thank you for Jim Hartley. And then we're going to jump into our book, Staying Sober, and we're going to look at the process done, of relapse. It. So I'm until bored. then, I'm going to jump back and say, here's Felice, everybody. He's going to say, island boy. Island boy. Island boy. <laughs> Cute white boy. <laughs> Island. What's up, Jim in the house? Happy Halloween, Teeter. Shree, what is up, fam? Because I'm an island boy. 
meant to cook. <laughs> That's for you, Andrew. That's for you. Is Except that Nicole. Mercalicious? Where? Oh, he's at the bottom. There he is. I see him, I lost and found my bananas. See Jamie. All in the same day. Geesh, Patrice, Soba Singa. Uh, at least Mary, what's boy up? Now. Yeah, look, there he is. Boy. New intro is legit. Thanks, brother. Miss that face, miss those comments. Morgan didn't like your uh, island boy. <laughs> uh, she hates the island boy. <laughs> she set us up yesterday. Uh, she's all, you want to hear something? And we're like, no. <laughs> Morgan's like, what? Show what me. <laughs> and she's like, yeah. We're like, no. And he's like, island boy. <laughs> Stop. Morgan's ears instantly were bleeding. Christine. <laughs> I, know, right? I, I don't really know where did. they found those items, boys, from. Those, yeah. I heard that they're super rich. <laughs> their dad is a, the best orthodontist in Louisiana, and their mom is part of a high law firm. She's like big partners in this huge law firm, you know. And they always come up and be like, "Man, your kids are doing great things." We saw their Island Boy video, and she's like, "Stop it! That's not my legacy." <laughs> That's your legacy. <laughs> Acceptance. <laughs> that's, that's where you're at in life. Oh, uh, snap. What's up, Chris Hill? What's up, Petey? We're being Hashtag island boys squad. today. What's up, big brother? What's up, Larry Wolfman? What's up? I'm cl clicking kind of fast because I think I'm pretty far behind. Thanks, Patrice. Thank you. Share squad. Welcome, yeah, please share us out, y'all. Spread this message. Tonight, we were talking about that today. I had the pleasure of being on the Other Side of Hell podcast today, and it was awesome. Paul, nice to see you. Everybody go trick-or-treating. Everybody got cavities and, and gained 20 pounds like I did? Because we got lots of candy. And tomorrow, <laughs> I'm changing things up. That's go what ahead. I should have did. I was Rita. too lazy to buy a costume, so I turned my clothes backwards and said I was crisscross. Going to make you jump, jump, jump. jump. What's up, Jen? Hugs. Hugs right back. See? Lots and lots of hugs. Chris Hill, what up, dogs? What's up, dog? How's the Chris Hillness? Michelle, to what's up? Michelle H. How you doing? Did you see the TikTok that was sent? Are no, we? Island Boy. Did you see the tent talk I sent you? I did not. Where did it where'd you send it? Where'd it land? Where did this What's thing up, land? Shauna? Is it in the texts? Too much candy. Thank you, Jim Hartley, for uh, Cash App 25. Appreciate that, brother. Kinjum. Kinjum Doji. Good morning. Hashtag Island Share. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. <laughs> island Share. <laughs> if I missed you, I apologize. But hello to everybody out there. All y'all in them digital bushes. Happy Halloween. <laughs> Group text. With the three of us. I'm going to have to go look mm, at that. Millie probably read it. Aw, oh, my heart is full, says W. Tucker. No I TikTok came through. No TikTok came through. No TikTok came through. So what are y'all doing to stay high on life these days? Huh? What are you doing to stay high on life? There's five ways to do it. The person in yeah. this, this is coming from Sober Nation again. I love these guys, man. I've been reading a lot of their articles and I'm going to drop it right here because I'm not going to plagiarize. I'm going to let you know where I'm getting this stuff from. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel either. There's so much good stuff out there. I'm going to just try to gather it all and give it into one little delivery package if I can. And then, you know, it helps me grow. It helps me actually cultivate some other coined thoughts and phrases. And I get to think about stuff and I love it. Shut the door. She find some friends. I have no idea. She got friends. About this time. person says, as a freshman in college, my relationships with drugs was in early honeymoon phase. Lots of fun. Everything felt new. My affection was always growing, and I experienced little to no consequences. In recovery, I have to be careful not to glorify or romanticize the times in my life I was getting high. I have to remember the darkness and life-threatening problems that lead me to the end. And that's such an honest statement right there because there are times I look back on from my very first time getting high to my last time getting drunk, everything in between there, I could pull out a lot of stories. And if I focused on them, it would take me right back out because I did. I had a freaking blast and it was so much fun. I loved it, but we can't do that because we have to look at what really happened in the mix, right? Besides the biopsychosocial destruction, which is the biopsychosocial destruction, right? Awesome. 
This person says, but I kept getting high for so long, despite the consequences that eventually came with it because I loved the experience. I love the euphoria that drugs induced the way my mind opened to new ideas, how comfortable I felt around people, our philosophical conversation. Remember that hit a big old line and sit there and solve all the world's problems in an hour with a person you don't even know. And the connection that I felt those people and the surrounding universe, right? Drugs were something spiritual and meaningful to this person here and a lot of other people too. I've done a lot of acid trips and some shroom mushroom trips and even on weed where I was like, wow, that was another realm. But after abusing drugs long enough, they lose all that meaning. They lose all that spiritual value. They even lose all the friendships and connections you think you have. And all of a sudden, these drugs just isolate you. And then that's when the knives come out and they start cutting you up, right? They become a way of coping with an overwhelming fear in life. There even comes that point, y'all know what I'm talking about, where you're using drugs just to be normal. And you got to use in excess to even try to get close to that high, which you never get to experience ever because you're using so much of it. In early recovery, this person says, I was jealous of the people in the world who can indulge in substances safely, who can have the relief every once in a while and carry on with a healthy life. Being I or having a buzz produces a good feeling, namely through huge dopamine surges, right? But we would always, our dopamine storage tanks had massive leaks in them because we were constantly trying to tap them. Which is, this person says, why I fell on drugs initially. But in sobriety, we can still feel good by experiencing new natural highs. Things that make us feel good like substances once did. Right? But they don't take our lives. There is new healthy ways to, to tap into these dopamines and these hormones and this, these things in our body that gets us high on life. And it's healthy. And it's okay to do. Right? Go ahead. Uh, Teeter says, if you are watching this high... This might be a trip with LT in the wig and scary clown mask. <laughs> They're like, what's going on? I'm a I Thank you, Morgan. The bananas. <laughs> I up those deep conversations I swear I'd remember and never remembered the next day. Right? So deep. They were so freaking deep. Yep. I had to drink a certain amount just to be baseline okay in my eyes. Jim says, alcohol isolated me because no one else seemed to be able to drink properly. And they'd end up wasting my buzz. They would waste my buzz because they drank too much alcohol. And I was like, man, I ain't sharing this with nobody no more. Get out of here. This whole bottle's mine. It's mine. My bottle. My so selfish. You got one? Bust it out, bud. <laughs> I dig, he dig, she dig, they dig, we all dig. It's not a good quote, but it's very deep. <laughs> <laughs> Super deep, bud. Super deep. Is he digging? Andrew He's says a to show his version of Island Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Is he okay with that? He says so. <laughs> okay, y'all. This is our very own Asia. This is Teeter's boy. Let me see. Let me get to it. Let me get to it. Oh, my God. Where is it? Wait, Teeter did it? Yeah. Well, I, Asia did it. <laughs> I'm an island boy. Just trying to make it. I'm an island boy. Yeah, I'm an island boy. <laughs> we got island boys everywhere. <laughs> I'm an island boy. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Hooey, man. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. What do we even Absolutely do? Absolutely crushing that? it. How do you top that? Have island it. Boy? I'm going to dream that island, boys. <laughs> this is Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of felt like I was ahead of the curve on yes, that uh, that viral, and I threw out my meme like three days to, before those guys really took off. <laughs> So now if you go to our Facebook page and you see my little island boy, like that's what you're one relapse away from an island boy. Be careful out there. <laughs> <laughs> so the first thing you can do, and I preach this all the time to tap into staying high on life is exercise. Dang it. Why is he going to say exercise? I hate it. But lifestyle change is the only way. If you are serious about sobriety, you are serious about rewriting your eulogy and your future, you want to rewrite and not waste this last half of your life, 
If you don't change your lifestyle, it ain't going to freaking happen. I'm going to tell you this right now. It ain't going to happen. And exercise is a part of that. We ruined our bio. That's our body psychosocial, right? Exercise fixes the body. It seems like most people hate running, but if you've experienced a runner's high or the euphoria that kind of physical activity can induce, you know what I'm talking about. Gym rats out there know what I'm talking about. I'm to the point I work out and it erases a bad day. It really does make you feel better. For this person, it says it's therapeutic. Mm -hmm. The time my brain gets to meditate. Uh, you get on a treadmill for 20 minutes, stair machine, and just walk at a high pace. Get your heart around 90 to 120. Put on a good podcast or just close out the world. You can even wear earplugs and meditate. Less anxiety. All that kind of stuff comes with it. And you can lose track of your body and time. I've done 14-mile runs before where your head just becomes a floating object through space. And you're, you kind of forget your body's like in, a, in motion. It's, it's pretty awesome. Lifestyle change. Biologically, intense physical activity puts our body in a state of stress and mild pain, which causes our brain to release neurochemicals called endorphins. Studies have shown that endorphins make people happier but they also act as a natural painkiller in our bodies. Endorphins are structurally similar to morphine and active, activate in our opiate receptors naturally to produce a feeling of euphoria. So you work out, your body sends painkillers through your body, natural euphoric painkillers, and it feels good and it's healthy and it's okay. This can happen with any kind of physical activity, whether it be weightlifting, dancing in your room, swimming in the pool, or even going for a walk. And with the virtual stuff you can put on now and do the boxing, it all comes. Anything that's going to get your heart rate at 120 for 15 to 20 minutes is going to release these endorphins. The more intense the activity and your physical strain, the greater your high. That's just why you see me do what I do if you come to the gym with me. I just can't get on board with the running, but I do like the stairs. I can't run anymore. <laughs> All right, LT, this is too hot. LT took me on like a six mile run one time. He's like, it's mostly downhill. It's lies. It was mostly uphill. Oh man, now I got this. <laughs> Jamie said, you know, someone said the other day, take care of your health or you will be forced to take care of your illness. I wrote it down and put it where I can see it every morning with my other prayers. I like that. That's very yeah, good. Yeah, that's so true. Take care of your health. You're going to take care of your f illness. Oh, but it's so expensive to eat healthy. You can either pay for that now or you can pay for subscriptions and insurance and go into the doctor later, right? The same kind of thing. Exactly. John says, working out in a Halloween costume, even better. Hashtag fun fact. <laughs> Mark's been following Island Boys. He's the original Island Boy lover. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't fought those idiots forever, he said. <laughs> oh, man, that's hilarious. Let's see. Yes, exercise is everything. I didn't walk today, and I feel sluggish. Keep going. Spin while wearing a devil mask. Yep, that happened. I had to catch up. My thing jumped. Oh. <laughs> Wasn't sure where I was. Spiritually is a great way to build a foundation in recovery. Don't forget it. Spirituality is what? Say Don't forget again? it. A wee program. Yeah. A wee program. Yeah. 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 Okay. That took a minute. Yeah. Definitely. Spirituality. <laughs> Andrew says, <sighs> hi, my husband, Merck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you two haven't talked for a while. Everything okay between you two? Ah, uh, that's cool, Jeanette. Jeanette says, I have actually started being silly dancing and whatnot since working out. I feel more carefree. Yeah, you're having right? more energy. Your yeah. body is like... Have fun. It stores energy to burn now. <laughs> Mark says he hates them so bad it's turned into a obsessive <laughs> love. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta fix my thing. I'll just stay over here. That'll work. So... Number two on our list of five ways to stay high on life is creativity and art. Have you ever tried to get creative and do artful things? Like I've always said, well, not always, but just recently I started saying, go try something new because the next thing you try could be your passion in life, right? Try something new. Lifestyle change is the only way. And trying to go out and do creative things, whether it be painting or sculpting or whatever you want to do, just give it a shot. 
Whether you identify as an artist or you feel like you don't have a creative bone in your body, finding a way to get creative can also get you feeling good. Much like meditation, it can relieve stress and anxiety. You do. You kind of get lost and focused, even if you're doing a coloring. Um, engaging in creativity, hands-on activities can produce the same therapeutic effects in our brain. That's what we're trying to do is rewire the ba brain. And creativity is one way to do that. When we are creative, our brain waves slow down from their normal hamster wheel, right? Speed and move closer to alpha waves. The state our brain enters just before we fall asleep. So when you get creative, your brain all of a sudden hits this different lull. The more we're in, the more we engage in our creative activity of choice, the deeper we go into this brain state called creative flow. Those island boys, they got some creative flow. Do they though? Oh, they are creative flow all day. They got that creative Tropic flow. And he's got his gun because he's an island boy. We become absorbed in the activity, lose all senses of time and self. Oh, weird. You want to stop getting introverted into self and self-condemnation and self-pity? Go be artistic, right? It's going to pull you out of that. That's like service work. You stop thinking about yourself when you're thinking about somebody else. You start losing all sense of time and self and gaining a feeling that we are accomplishing a task and doing something meaningful. All of this has the power to quiet the external chaos in our lives and give us a brain buzz, a good one. With creative exploration, you might find an activity you enjoy. Anytime we do something we truly enjoy, our brain releases natural dopamine reward. The same neurotransmitter that gave us pleasure when we use substances just in a healthier amount. So start exploring. By all means, try your hand at coloring, drawing, painting, writing, knitting, sewing, or playing an instrument. But art and creativity in general goes far beyond these activities. Jamie can't really tell if we like the Island Boys or not. I'll never tell you. <laughs> Sean says, I love the idea of flow. Can go for conversations as well as creative endeavors. True. Betty, Betty, true. Yeah, I finally got to meet some people uh, out here. I went and did the Other Side of Hell podcast today. And I know Will, you know, I've met him a few times. And I finally got to see their studio and see their gear and see what they're all about. And I finally found some local dudes who have similar equipment and similar backgrounds as far as videography and film and music. And all three of us are going to start collaborating here in about a month and start producing short films. So I'm super excited to finally meet people who have already experienced not only do they know how to use cameras and editing but they've experienced it and they actually have made videos so i'm excited about that tracy says i found i can get through pain with painting instead of drugs no doubt no no doubt and that's the next thing we're gonna do proud of you jeanette you're killing it heck yeah ever since you set your goal working nope. out and stuff you keep doing it yeah, Jeanette, kill it. Keep going. Keep going. You'll see that it just, it gets better and better and better, better and better and better. Just don't give up. <gasps> Number three. Who has a tuba? Learning and spirituality. This person says, I love to learn. And that's the same with me. We were talking about that on the other side of hell podcast today. It was like the message, right? Spread the message. That's chapter, or that's, that's step 12. And it's a reason that it's step 12. It's the very last one, because if you haven't gained a message to deliver, learned a message to deliver, you're not going to be able to effectively deliver any message. So you have to learn, absorb, read, listen to podcasts, throw the music out the window for the while when you're in the car and go to automobile university and play podcasts, right? Um, this person says, I love to learn. This is the essence of life for me. This hunger was even at the center of my drug use. I felt like I became more and more enlightened with each new drug I tried. And those experiences were what I considered spiritual. But then they stopped working. I started to feel numb and barely believed I was real. As a human, we are curious by nation. We, by nature, we are curious and we are creators by nature, right? As children, we explore new things and we are quick to ask why when the adults explain things to us. There may not always be an answer even when we are adults. The beautiful thing is, is that the high exists in the pursuit. This is how I view my spirituality, a lifelong process of learning about myself and the universe. 
never stop learning. This is going to be a learning game the rest of our life. And it's not just a learning game how to stay sober. It's a learning game how to grow and be the best you you can be. What can you do today to be the best you tomorrow? And do the same thing again. And if what you're doing right now is not working, change it up. Do something different. Lifestyle change is the only way. If you're going to go on a diet, if you're going to lose weight, you can't just, I'm going to go on a crash course diet and change nothing in my life. It ain't going to work. You may lose 15 pounds really fast, but in about a week after that, it'll be right back. Lifestyle change. Yeah, if not more. Lifestyle change is the only way. Number four, nature and adventure. Connecting with nature. Go on hikes. Go on walks. It's a way of interacting with and learning about the universe, right? In sobriety, as this person's senses started to return to them, They became aware of things like all the different shades of green in trees, the smell of rain, the explosion of colors at a sunset. We start to experience the things that we had numbed out for so long, we get another chance to experience childlike awe. So get out there, get in nature, and play like a kid. That's one thing I've really loved about our laser tag adventures we've been going on. All of a sudden, I forget I'm 42 years old. And I'm running around like I'm freaking a little kid again and having a blast. And I watched my buddies, Smoking fools. Luke and uh, and Brandon, do it last night. These are older dudes. They're all about my age, you know. And Brandon, he's even older than that. He's almost 50. He's old. He's ancient. Boom. Turned into kids again. Laughing. Gut laugh. Like, not just like, ha, 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 that was fun. But like gut, belly roll, laughing. And Luke texts me today, dude, my legs feel like I went to the gym. <laughs> Get out and play. There's, there's a lot of squatting. Yeah. So go figure out something fun to do and play like a kid. Go out and play tag, hide and seek or something out in the nature, out in the natures. And then connect and serve. Five, connection and service. This person says, my drug use eventually progressed just to just me, right? Alone in a room. And that's what it is. We become completely self, selfish and isolated. And that's why if you go watch our little video we made for you, Sara, that's why the last two weeks we put, we put it out there. Go do something nice for somebody and resist the urge to go brag about it because that is our nature. That's the nature we're fighting is that selfish nature, even under the guise of, I did something good and it might inspire somebody. Just keep your mouth shut. Look at me. Always wanting the thumbs at me, right? Look at me, guys. Look what I did. Give me a pat on the back. Just go do something nice and don't tell nobody and resist that. And that's where you'll start feeling the battle. That'll give you a good hard line in the sand of like, oh, there's where the battle is. Give it a shot. You really get to practice some humility. So the sense of connection in service gives our brains a dopamine reward, which makes us feel good. In sobriety, we can seek this connection with the people around us by participating in our recovery community and especially by helping each other. It's the best way to get out of your head is to focus on somebody else. And then when you see that person succeed and that person smile that you can tell hasn't smiled for a while, it just it, that alone is a reward in itself. Oh, they're just saying hi to Cherie. Hi, Cherie. What is up? And Leslie put Teeter in time out. For real? Not on purpose. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he was being naughty. <laughs> really? For real? It's like he's in time out. He's back now. Oh, my God. See, gosh. we're talking later, Leslie. <laughs> <laughs> Could be a naughty. Would you hate it on oh Island my Boys? Oh, goodness. Cherie in the house. Yes. To represent in Canada. What are you doing? Did you move to Canada? Canada. <laughs> it's closer. We can go visit you if you live in Canada. Maybe. All right. Y'all know what time it is. Today's question comes from Jim. Well, actually, it was yesterday at 10, 12 a.m. He says, I see a lot of people trying to cover their past life with their present life or their predicted future. That doesn't work, nor is it a good I- good thing. Why is that? Why? What? Let me make sure I finish that. It only gives me two. Why is it said that we shouldn't be ashamed of our past, nor should we shut the door on it? There's a lot of reasons why that. And I kind of like what you hint at here. 
a lot of people trying to cover their past with their present life. You, I ain't going to talk about it. I'm going to be who I am in the now. And, and I hope that's all people see and don't ever bring up my past, you know, and we don't want to talk about it. The past is something secret, dark and ugly that I don't ever want to bring up and talk about. Or this future that I'm planning. Oh, I'm going to go to college. I'm going to do this. I'm this and this. And I'm going to own a house. And that's all you talk about is your plans for the future and how you're going to get there without talking about the past. That's what normies do, right? But us here in recovery, we're not going to shut the door on it, right? We're not going to be ashamed of it. And we get to a point where we're grateful for it because just by speaking that we're normal, that things happen, then there's more normality in being a child of a divorced parents or like me, I told my story today and it's like, I started doing using drugs at a young age. Big deal. That's like everybody's story. <laughs> you know, it's nothing right. unique. My story is not unique. And this travel I pat the path I traveled isn't a unique either. I just went down the same path and I was able to come out of it. And by me not shutting the door on that, but using it to say, Hey, look, I'm just like you all. And it is possible because if I can do it, you can do it. And that's kind of where I see that landing right there. Yeah. I, like I agree. Definitely can't forget what we've been through. No, you can't forget it. But you also can't live in it. Can't There's live a in point it. where you focus on your future and don't live in the past, but you don't forget about it either. True that. Yeah. Not always when somebody's living in in the now does it mean they're forgot about their past. They're just enjoying the now. If you have your book, Staying Sober, A Guide for Relapse Prevention by Terrence Gorski, turn with me to page 115. 115 all. 115. 115. Go down to that bottom paragraph. This is after we talked about stinking thinking, right? Stinking thinking, the dry drunk syndrome. Just because you quit using drugs doesn't mean you're in recovery. A lot of people think just because I quit using drugs, I'm in recovery. And what happens? It says many recovering alcoholics have remained drug free but have committed suicide or have collapsed physically or emotionally. This is not recovery. The concept of the relapse process as drinking or drug use only prevents treatment of sobriety based symptoms of addiction. If you just quit drinking or using drugs, you're only beating the sobriety based symptoms, the withdrawal, the dependency. Now it's time to work on this up here. Six months to a year into recovery, you're going to forget that you jumped into recovery to get sober because you're going to want to continue this forward growth of how much better life feels on this side. All right? Turn over to page 116. We're going to go down to the paragraph that starts the role of substitute addiction. The role of substitute addiction. Once a person becomes addicted or dependent upon one drug, there is a tendency to transfer that dependency to other mood altering drugs. Mm -hmm. This is especially true if the other drug is similar to the original drug of dependency. So in my drug use history, true. I have used in excess uh, weed, crank, crystal meth, acid, shrooms alcohol. Um, those were my main six, right? But three out of that category I used daily for multiple years at a time in three separate parts of my life. The first one was meth. Uh, I used that every single day, all day, every day for a year or two, Good right? Reason. The second one was weed. And I used that for multiple years, five, six plus years daily. And was very difficult to quit. I found, man, I found it very difficult to quit smoking weed. And then after that, alcohol, right? So three times in my life, I have actually used drugs daily. And those were the three, right? And so that's kind of the substitute addiction. I, I went from meth to weed to alcohol. But in all of that, I did all kinds of other stuff too. What have you guys, guys, what have you all done? Melissa Young, welcome. Uh, What's up, Melissa? What drugs and have you used on separate occasions for multiple years at a time. Have you seen yourself switch from like me, meth to weed to alcohol? Or did you just pick one and stick with one? What was your deal? It seems like the heroin, like people get to heroin and that is just the big. They're done. You know, the hook in the mouth, the one that, man, somebody pointed that out to me the other day. Who was that? Were you with me? I was like, we don't see any old heroin addicts. I can't remember who we were with. You see a bunch of old meth addicts. You see a bunch of old alcoholics, but there ain't no old old heroin addicts oh, out there. 
Yeah. Zach said it. Zach said it. Because they die. Because it kills you. Your next shot could be your last shot. Very young. This is especially true if the other drug is similar to the original drug of dependency. This process is called cross addiction. To become addicted to one drug will cause rapid addiction to any other drug in that group. The reason is primarily physical. The body becomes dependent upon that type of drug and will respond in the same way to the drugs that are similar. Hmm. A person can also become dependent upon mood altering drugs from different drug groups. This dependency to a new drug develops gradually. And that's kind of the fear I have with this new wave recovery, right? The California sober, the, the movement of marijuana, gummies, edibles, THC becoming very acceptable in this country, which yeah. I don't have a problem with whatever. If people want to go do drugs and get high, I hope I wish them the best. Right. But I'm not going to go out and try to just, Hey, you're a drinker, you know, put recovery in their face, but if they want support out of addiction and into recovery. Then I'm going to tell them how it is. And that's what we're here for. Um, and that's what makes me worried. Like people will be like, well, I used to drink, so weed's legal and I, I can still smoke weed. But the fact that you had an addiction that severe to alcohol or meth and think by switching over to weed, it's going to all of a sudden become this better thing is a lie we tell ourselves. And that is the reason me, I preach for myself, 100% abstinence. I cannot take mind altering drugs as much as I would like to. I even, I wanted to today, you know, like it, it kind of crossed my mind thinking about creativity and I was showing some old music that I had made and I was, and it was music I made when I was stoned. And I was just like, man, that would be nice to get ripped. And I was like, no, I could probably do that. You know, you had a little talk in your mind and no, I can't. Cause then it just would ruin my clean date. It would just, if, if it didn't take me down within two or three weeks and I would stop doing the stuff that I'm doing now, within a year or two, I would be back to drinking. It would just slowly be this thing that's rolled right into addiction and start everything over. And I don't want to do that. Go ahead. Uh, let's see. There's a few. Let's start with Jeanette said heroin to fentanyl. Jim said alcohol, benzos, weed were always in my goodie bag. Shree said alcohol's hardest. Jamie, you see younger people in NA because it takes people faster than alcohol. True. That's true. I've switched from smoking cracked meth to opioids to fentanyl. Jim agrees with Shree. Meth had the next level power over me. Let's see. Alan says, Jeanette's old. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. Let me just jump in this room real quick and say, uh, Jeanette's old. All right. You guys have a good day. Stay in your room, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> Jeanette, Jeanette, you're the only one. <laughs> the only one, old one that made it out. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> Leroy Jenkins. You should make a video about that. Leroy Jenkins. He kicks down the door. I'm an island boy. <laughs> Just mix them all together. It'll be fine. You and me both, LT. Weed is off limits for me. It will take me back to drinking. Yeah, as much as I can. Oh, and I have to talk myself out of fantasizing about it. I like turtles. <laughs> That's awesome. I like turtles. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I love That's one of my favorite. <laughs> oh, crap. That's so funny. A person can also become dependent upon mood altering drugs from different groups. This dependency to the new drug develops gradually. It's very sneaky. What do they say about alcohol? It's baffling, baffling cunning, and powerful, right? Mm -hmm. It is. It, and not only is it so sneaky, the whole time we're getting into this whole self justification character defect, and we just, you, you're doing the right thing. Keep going. It's so funny. I was on that other side of hell podcast. I'm going to say that probably 10 more times tonight. But Will will Shut call up. Cameron. And if Cameron doesn't answer the phone, Will leaves a message as, as, as the addict. <laughs> it's so funny. Hey, Will. Or, hey, Cameron. <laughs> it's me. I haven't heard from you in a while. <laughs> How you doing, buddy? We used to go to the bar all the time. Let's uh, let's do that and hang out. I, I really liked who you used to be, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> we used to go out and have fun. Now we just go out to eat. But <laughs> oh, That's a good one. I love Will and Cameron. They're awesome. 
You sound like cool people. So a person can transfer dependency to a variety of other drugs. This process can be at best be understood by looking at what is called the addiction equation. Have you heard of the addiction equation? If not, no. I'm going to put it in here and then I will post it real quick. So Fleece, take over. Fleece is taking over. I like total. Fleece, take the controls. Taking over. Let me get my headset on so I can take control. Does Alan of have his seatbelt on? Here. Abstinence is the only way for Alan, me. Put your seatbelt on. I'm an addict. Alan Hoffer. I feel like that's the equivalent of Leroy Jenkins. Oh my gosh, I already have it in here. Uh, JV addict voice it was like the devil voice I used tonight. Ooh, creepy. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> now you drink lots of coffee and polar seltzers. <laughs> John's addict voice. <laughs> Pain plus alcohol and drugs equals immediate. So this is about cross addiction, right? Okay. I quit drinking alcohol, but if I try this or if I go to the dentist and get a toothache and he prescribes me this and it's legal, I can do that. Right. And I get some painkillers. They give me some of the, the good stuff, right? It's okay. The doctor gave it to me. We start tricking ourselves into this. And all of a sudden this pain of whatever it is, Plus the alcohol or drugs equals, ah, just like our ad addicts love it, right? Instant gratification. If I take this, it's going to take away my pain instantly. I can expect it as trustworthy. I've done it every single time. But we forget the last part of the equation. Immediate pleasure plus future pain. That future pain part is always... It's because when we are starting to get into our addictive thinking and thinking into addiction, we do this pain plus alcohol equals immediate pleasure. Immediate pleasure stops at the end of our elbows, and that's as far as we can see. We can't see past our elbows. If we were to look out into the distance like you're supposed to do when you're driving, look way out in front of you, biking, we would learning. see future pain and stay away from it. Uh, Jeanette, polar seltzer is basically flavored carbonated water. It's disgusting. It's just nasty. I want to like Carla it, Bell. but I cannot because it's so gross. Just to thank you, Suri. Everybody, hit that hit that like button, y'all. Unless you don't like it, then don't. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> we don't like it. But give it the thumbs down. Talk crap. I don't even care. Chemically dependent people have come to rely on a primary drug of choice to cope with life. If when they abstain from that drug, they're merely substitute a new drug, they can develop a dependency on the new drug. We get, we, we get it, right? The substitute drug may not be as effective as the primary drug of choice in relieving the pain. And this causes the people to think about and crave the original drug. That's why it's dangerous in this world of this modern weed being cool you go out, it's legal, I'll try it, it's harmless, it's harmless, and I can do it. You know, you do it, and it gives you that euphoria, you like it, but it's not giving you quite what your drug of choice gave you, and all of a sudden, bam, you're fantasizing, romanticizing. Ah, if I can handle this, I can handle that, right? Oh, he found it. Yuck, it is gross. Agreed. It's like polar bears, except not at all. That's exactly correct. Debbie Tucker. This causes people to think that, think about and crave the original drug. Also, during periods of intoxication, their judgment may be impaired, causing them to make irresponsible choices to use the primary drug again. Oh, I'm high. I could drink. Your judgment's impaired. You're not going to make proper, clear decisions. And for me, at this moment in my life, two years of sobriety, I love how clear my mind is. It is back on track, running full speed. I think clearer. I solve problems faster. I'm more productive. I'm more involved. Oh, man. Life is so much better in recovery. Right, Lanky? Right. Good. Boom. Sheree said, we are a bloody great family. We are a great bloody family, mate. You know, life is better in recovery because we can make real memories instead of like drunk not, memories. Not memories? They don't forget, you know? <laughs> so true, bud. Betty, buddy, true. It's true. Where am I? Has anybody seen those girls? <laughs> <It's true. laughs> Merck, you still here? It's true. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Watch it. It's fun. 
Steve oh, Martin. What's welcome. up, Steve? I wait all week for your show. It's helped me to keep fighting the disease. Yes. That's why we keep here. doing it, dude. And that comment encourages us to keep going. So thank you. I'm glad you're on the journey of sobriety. Keep going. Keep pressing. Kick its butt because it is completely worth it. Trust me, it is so worth it. Thank you. You got wig hair still all over me. It's okay because your accent's getting better. Mine? Yeah. She said that? Yeah. Oh, sweet. Did she mean <laughs> it? I don't know. <laughs> is she just right? being noise? We should just stop over her head. <laughs> just stop it. I felt like mine was more English than Australian. <laughs> the show, show in Australian, mate. Changing yeah. from one addiction to another is not full recovery. Agreed. Hmm? How do you like those apples? If you believe that you can safely use large amounts of nicotine or caffeine, smoke marijuana, use diet pills, or over the counter sleep aids as long as you are not using alcohol or other drugs, you are at high risk of developing a second addiction. Boom, boom, boom. And I have already done that with my nicotine and caffeine. Fact yes. of the matter, I am addicted to nicotine and caffeine. It's true. It's true. <laughs> you have pit hairs? Let me see. <laughs> Just <kidding. laughs> As Jake would say in the morning, if you don't drink, don't smoke, don't start. If you don't vape, don't smoke, don't start. It is true that some addictions are more harmful than others. We know that nicotine's not very harmful. Smoking cigarettes obviously is not good for your body. Blah, blah, blah. You get it, right? <laughs> it's not good. Some are worse than others. And some chemical addictions such as to alcohol, cocaine, and heroin, they're not as bad as that. In most cases, caffeine addiction will not cause the same type of severe problems as a result of alcohol or weed, right? And some people can continue to use, continue the use of caffeine and nicotine without increasing the amount. But the truth is that the addictive use of caffeine and nicotine can be lethal. The American oh. Cancer Society reports that more people die from cancer caused by nicotine addiction than by abuse of any other drug. But that's cigarettes, not, not vape. Okay. Is that self-justification? Self-justification. Like Three. <laughs> uh, pro tip, switch to decaf after 5 p.m. Question, do they make decaf rockstar? You drink coffee after five? <laughs> <laughs> or he's at about four rock stars by then. <coughs> yeah, well, I'm, my rock star is about two a day. Ah. Yeah, caffeine kills me in excess. Me too. I don't like it. I like it. I have like a small red bull and I'm done. I like turtles. I like turtles. Brad is missing. Does anybody know Bradley. where the Bradley is? And we're getting a lot of take the clown down. <laughs> really? <laughs> Leslie's all, the clown can go now. <laughs> hey, he's my friend. He's nice. Look, I'm not scared. I can't even touch him. Where is he? <laughs> Did you guys see this one? Nice. The scary guy there. Do you see Satan in the background? <laughs> There's Ted. Satan. Ted. <laughs> oh, Jim's got a joke. Ooh. Ooh. What did the three-legged dog say when he walked into the saloon? He said, "I'm looking for the guy that shot my paw." <laughs> <laughs> pew pew. Get it, Leaky? A three-legged dog walked into a bar. He said, "I'm looking for the guy that shot my paw." Or his, <laughs> or his daddy. That's funny. Leslie does not like clowns. I got one. Clown is the new co-host. Quit clowning around. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it. A blind man walks into a bar, a table, a chair, and a staircase. <laughs> a blind guy walks into a bar, a chair. A table and a staircase. And then says, ow. Jeanette says, listening to you guys are like listening to a group with Tourette sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> What's that? What's that? What's that? <laughs> Maybe we have Tourette's. Maybe. Oh my gosh, I watched this girl with Tourette's try and get a COVID test and she's all chopping the leg. Hey, hey, fuck you. <laughs> <So funny. laughs> 
This is one of the funniest things I've seen in a while. She has like her own little TikTok thing. Carla says, it's 9.50 and I'm drinking coffee right now with a cigarette <laughs> after eating candy all evening. <laughs> bad, bad. It's Halloween, bad. right? It's Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you know. If you don't know, now you know. And that's the truth. Brad is the clown. <laughs> Wouldn't that be creepy if like Brad, like all of a sudden he like Just popped out, was like walking. Speaking of clowns. Hi, Millie. <laughs> <laughs> Repping T. TK over there. All right. Check this out. And I hate this part because I love caffeine, but it says the role of caffeine in the last few years, research has begun to show that caffeine can be used addictively. Oh, duh. <laughs> it's harmful to the health and functioning. It can reactivate the addictive cycle for people seeking to recover from alcohol addiction. So I guess we don't want to get back into addiction, right? That's, that's a whole main thing besides our life becoming unmanageable. Uh, with alcohol and drugs, all of a sudden you're back to this addiction again, right? I can't go nowhere unless I have it. I need to stop and get it. I'm wasting money on it. That's where I'm at. Um, and that's that's kind of what we want to stop doing. John Blantner has Blantner. done extensive research into the relationship between caffeine use and recovery. His findings are convincing. He says, alcoholics tend to be, to be heavier consumers of caffeine than non-alcoholics. That's why as alcoholics drink coffee at 9.50, right? And Sean Larry says, change it to decaf. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Hoffer wants to know who does these tasks. Good Lord. I could say that. <laughs> Worst headache of Jamie's life was quitting the caffeine. I you did a cold turkey? Oh, my goodness. I don't... Damn, Jamie. Alcoholics tend to be heavier consumers turkey? of caffeine than non. Gross. Um, recovering alcoholics who are heavy caffeine user, users report increased symptoms of physical stress and anxiety while using caffeine. They also report headaches, severe irritability, emotional overreaction severe when what? not over irritability. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> Is that president all? <laughs> Commander in chief. <laughs> Imagine emotional overreaction when not using caffeine. These symptoms are a part of caffeine withdrawal. Well, if you'd keep drinking caffeine, you ain't going to withdraw. So you guys yeah. I have a hard part with this caffeine because I don't want to be. I guess I don't want to like admit I'm addicted and then like want to have to quit. Cause I, I don't want to quit. I don't, I don't give a shit. What about decaf, Dad? Do I care? No. Should I care? Yes. Ooh. Pros and cons. Should I quit drinking caffeine? Yes or no? Here's a poll. Step away from the coffee cup. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie Tucker says. <laughs> Jamie says, my inner inner addict says, hey, if you want to feel high, take a regular coffee. Why don't you? <laughs> mm, coffee. Sean Leary's addict now calls, hello, Sean. <laughs> I know you want to reach for that green Folgers canister, but just grab the red one. <laughs> <laughs> Caffeine and nicotine. I thought I was. I had over two years sober. <laughs> he thought <Shit>. wrong. <laughs> Everybody's questioning their sobriety now. <laughs> oh damn it! Thank you, Terrence Gorski. <laughs> no, caffeine is life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting facts. Uh, do the research on when the coffee bean was like discovered, and look at the history of the world, and the like technology and when stuff like started to increase like before caffeine and after caffeine it's very interesting look into that you folders <laughs> yeah. i don't like folders either i better open people's eyes literally nope cheers <laughs> leslie says don't <laughs> quit progression not perfection thank you sheree everybody feels better now uh, this guy says that there's an increased report in relapses in heavy caffeine users. Caffeine seems to contribute to relapse in the following way. Okay. Heavy caffeine users suffer from caffeine related anxiety, stress, irritability, and overreaction. They do know, they do not know that these symptoms are caused by caffeine. So they fear something more serious may be happening to them. The overreaction causes s situational problems and also prevents them from coping rationally with the problems as they develop. The end result is increased problems, anger, and frustration that increase that increases the risk of relapse. So basically, if you are unaware that caffeine and nicotine 
while drinking a lot of caffeine can in, increase anxiety and give you the jitters and all that kind of stuff, which could possibly stress you out if you can't accomplish a task properly because you're too just wired out on caffeine. Uh, and then that could pose a problem to relapse. But so if you do get feeling like that after you've had lots of caffeine, know that it's the caffeine and you're not crazy. And then nicotine withdraws in the same manner, right? Happy Halloween, Lish. Happy Halloween, Alicia. Happy what Halloween. Up? Glad she's here. So be careful out there. And then compulsive behavior. We'll get into that next week. Compulsive behavior. It's a fine balance with everything. Anxiety is a struggle for me. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely right. 100% right. I have not heard more about Cassie. I'm going to try to get a hold of her this week. She's been, it's, she's busy. She does modeling stuff. So like this is her time of year to get pictures and stuff. Yes, sir. Getting right there on it. Um, how did everybody do this weekend? Today's Halloween. Did anybody struggle with wanting to drink or go back into an old party situation or anything like that? And Geesh, do your research and get a hold of me this week about step one. Um, how was Halloween in this holiday for everybody? Everybody handling it okay? Stressed out? What's going on with y'all? Thanks, Wolfman. Thank you, Wolfman. Heck yeah, yeah. Let me know in the Discord as well, and we can hit you up Oh, let me there. drop that link again. Yeah, Fleece is going to drop the link to the Discord. If you are not in the Discord, that's where you want to be. That's where the rubber meets the road. That's where we have our daily meetings. Though they haven't really been very popular lately, they're there if you need them. Oh, I missed it. Went too low. Went too low. Jamie went to a party, and there was a few reminders of why I'm glad I don't drink anymore. Right? <laughs> yeah. We've had that too this week. Uh, we had we missed some friends missed bike riding with us. Some friends of friends missed bike riding with us because they were nursing hangovers, which I was like, oh, we're up at 11. We're out and getting our stuff ready to go to get on the mountain and have fun. And I couldn't imagine being like, oh, waking up nursing a hangover and like ruining your whole day. That would suck. Yeah. Way rather be mountain biking. Yeah. Whole day stolen. Screw that. Ready? Okay. Wait, let me check the comments one more time. God, God, grant me the serenity, serenity to, to accept, accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and, and the wisdom, wisdom to know, know the difference. difference. Amen. Amen. How said the magic? And John says, we recover better together by staying safe, staying sane, staying strong, staying sober. You're worth it. Good night, family. I love you. Thank you, John, for dropping those again. Sorry I haven't been able to catch your show. It's just when you go live is when we're at our program here locally that we're starting, and it sucks for that fact. John has his call. Heck yeah, he's awesome. He knows how to use computers. And amen from Tita. Hey. Jen says, went to an AA meeting after work. Now listening to you guys. Awesome. You Keep your mind on the path to recovery. Nature abhors a vacuum. If you're going to get rid of something, you got to replace it with something positive or it's going <laughs> to go Jim right back to the way it was. Turtles. Jim still loves turtles. Like Until that. next Sunday, y'all, do not put yourself in a high-risk situation. Stay strong, work your programs, and remember, we, we recover, recover better, better together. together. And look, LT, let's me and you talk. Whoops. Wrong <laughs> outro. <laughs>